In this video, I wanna talk about 10 reasons why you might still be stuck, 10 mistakes you might be making, and 10 myths that I hear constantly in the OCD community, on social media forums, and why OCD isn't as simple as so many of these things. But before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button, comment down below, let me know if you've been using some of these methods, let me know if there's some things you have to change about your approach to OCD recovery, and let's jump right into it. But remember, info at ocdrecovery.com if you're looking for webinars and coaching services information, and we'll get back to you in a timely fashion. So the first one I wanna talk about is probably the number one thing that OCD and anxiety sufferers do that keep them stuck in the cycle. And that is trying to redirect to the present moment. Now, when you're suffering with OCD, the thing that's never gonna be able to be obtained in the way that you can imagine is the present moment. So I was hearing, I was, was listening to many people. I was thinking about things that I was uh, you know, told incorrectly on my journey, thinking about things I hear people told all the time that keeps them stuck, and this is one of the major things. So what people will say is, if you have an OCD thought, acknowledge it and redirect to the present moment. That's a joke, and that is that makes OCD out to be way too easy. It's not that simple. Anyone that has OCD knows it's not that simple. What you wanna do is become more accepting that you're not gonna be present. Not being present in the, in, in not being aware of the present moment is not the end of the world. It's frustrating and you're missing out on the feeling the present moment can bring, but the more you try to chase it, the further away the present moment will elude you. It's like happiness. It's like trying to chase happiness. So this is the number one thing I see people do. They'll try to uh, thought, acknowledge like, ooh, this is an OCD thought. And then they're forgetting that OCD takes orders from beliefs. It doesn't take orders from thoughts. It doesn't take orders from thoughts, images, urges, and sensations. Not primarily, those are symptoms from the core fear. And if you have a fear of dying, you're gonna have images of death, you're gonna have sensations of about to pass out or die, maybe health OCD. Those are symptoms of the core fear. So acknowledging them and then trying to redirect to the present moment is a massive compulsion that goes completely against the willingness to experience the discomfort in the now. That is the biggest mistake OCD sufferers make. The second thing is you're putting too much emphasis on exposures. I cannot tell you how many people I see put all their emphasis on exposures, and exposures are great. They're targeted, they could certainly get in there with the fear. Outward exposures, very important for contamination OCD. Sensory motor OCD, not that important. Existential OCD, not that important. Documentaries here, sure and there, Matrix and the Truman, Sh Truman Show, but Overall, it's the unconditional life acceptance of death in the death example. When it comes to harm OCD, P OCD, religious OCD, breaking it down with unconditional self-acceptance. Yes, the exposures and everything are key, they're vital, but I know many people who have basically exhausted their exposures and they're now using exposures as a compulsive way to escape. Exposures can certainly be used incorrectly, just like unconditional self-acceptance can be certainly used unhealthily. Anything, all the principles and tools that we use for OCD and anxiety recovery can be used incorrectly in a forceful manner. Then you ask me, well, how do I know if it's not, if it's helpful or if it's not? Feeling confused is so key. I don't hear people talk about the feeling of confusion enough. Anyone who has OCD understands that the feeling of confusion is the most important thing. Number three, you think OCD recovery is easier than it is. A lot of people, understandably so, because there's really not many things in life that people are willing to really work at. And I don't mean work at it in a compulsive way. I mean, excuse me, the patience involved when it comes to OCD and anxiety recovery is a lot. You're not gonna be able to just skim read a couple books and do a couple exposures and then recover. OCD recovery usually takes a couple years from the chronic level. It doesn't mean you're, you won't have your life back in three months, you know, man, a month. I was back at work in a month living my life, but I was chronically suffering on law for a couple of years, the better part of almost three years, actually. So it's very important to realize that it's not easy. And the reason why most people don't reach OCD recovery isn't because they can't reach OCD recovery. It's because A, they're being explained the tools and principles about OCD recovery in an incorrect manner. And second, they are undermining the realities of what it takes to reach OCD recovery. It is fucking tough. It's not rocket science in a principal manner, unconditional acceptance, exposures when needed, patience, consistency, dedication, yeah, all the main things. But the, the, the plan is simple. The actual journey is confusing, ups and downs, relapses, back to spikes. So that's key. Number four, you're making immediate changes. 
Now, this is how a compulsion works. I'm going to go in. Many people have heard me use this, this almost waterfall analogy. So let's say you're at the top waterfall, which is the compulsion. And then what happens is you cut the compulsion out and that flows into this anxiety spike. Maybe it's a spike of uh, shame, guilt, depersonalization, derealization. All those spike up. Then it flows into it feels so real, as I say in all the webinars, that if it didn't feel real, it wouldn't be too much of a disorder with it because you would just disregard and, and you would be like, oh, it's not really a big deal. But no, it feels as real as it can get. That's something Rob coined and I speak about consistently in my one-to-ones and, and uh, webinar services because it, that's what makes it stick. So it feels so real. You feel so in danger. The urgency feels so real that you revert back to your compulsions. And that is why we make immediate changes. So we go from decreasing medication dosages. This is just an example. Always speak to your doctor to going back on medications. 75 milligrams to 105 to 25 and up and forth. No gym, all the gym. No caffeine, all caffeine. No alcohol, all the alcohol. No Netflix, all Netflix. It's like it's that instant gratification. And then OCD and anxiety recovery lies in that middle area of learning to just experience sensations and go along as best as you can while breaking down your behaviors and your belief systems. Number five, this plays directly into the point we just talked about. You have too many social media compulsions. You're blocking people way too quickly. You're unfollowing people. You're deleting all social media apps off your phone. There is a time and place where sometimes I recommend let's not use social media, but then the, the end goal is always intuition, using it in a balanced manner, and then feeling again that confusion, am I using it enough? And then with the social media confusion uh, uh, compulsions is when I can tell in a matter of one second if someone has a poor conditional acceptance about the way they look. Now, always remember this. Just because OCD sufferers feel extreme amount of emotional disturbances doesn't mean the conditional acceptance isn't at an all-time high with people who don't have OCD and very conditional acceptance. So it's not in the way that people think. If you're posting with filters every time, there's no need for filters ever. There never needs to be a filter ever. It's a complete lie and it's a complete illusion. There, I'll say this again. There never needs to be a filter. Using a filter is not inherently bad, of course. And they have, they add this novelty experience, but it is completely overused. You don't need captions. Um, you don't need to post. With, I can tell, by the way, people post in the angles. Always trying to look good. And this looks really funny. Pause it on this. You know, always that drubbing their jaw out to make their, all the things that they do, taking photos a hundred times. Social media is not inherently good or bad, but it primarily is used for unhealthy behaviors. The healthiest way to use social media is, from, in my opinion, is business perspective, learning, instant updates on news or what's going around the world. It's not supposed to be used, in my opinion, from a health, from a <coughs> mindset perspective of constantly uploading selfies. I know this better than most because of my body dysmorphia journey, and it took me a while to acknowledge that, so it is very unfortunate. The sixth thing I want to talk about, which is the most important and the reason why I put it in the middle, is you are trying too hard to recover. You've read all the books and you go, oh, I have to go back and read passages. I have to do more exposures. I'm not doing enough. I have to do this. I have to do that. A lot of people will really have been educated on theory. Theory is not enough, but they won't have the practical tools to change their behaviors. And I'm going to combine this with point number seven, which is you're not trying hard enough. And this goes back to point number three, where you think OCD recovery is easier than it is. If you haven't read all the books on the reading list, if you, if you haven't educated yourself on how OCD works, if you haven't learned to behaviorally change your compulsions and avoidance behaviors, and if you haven't worked towards unconditional self-life, other acceptance, you're not going to recover. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's not maybe, maybe not. OCD recovery is not as simple as that. Maybe, maybe not. It is what it is. That's rationalization. That's superficial. So I do this a lot in my webinars. Most people are living, let's just say this is uh, the earth. You know, most people are living on this very superficial. I was until I learned all this. Um, it's and Again, it's you, there's nothing wrong with living this way. There's just real no depth to it. The further you go into the, into the core of the earth, the more you start to realize how all these societal strong beliefs that people hold are completely man-made concepts. They're, they don't hold validity. The only reason they hold validity is because the societal belief, the time period we live in, and the way we structure our legal systems and everything in between. But 
They don't need to be that way. There's not a universal principle saying that. So not understanding those principles when it comes to harm OCD, POCD, false memory, real event, cheating OCD, you're just never going to recover because your OCD is not going to give you the capabilities to recover. And that is so key. I love saying that. I get made fun of that a lot. It's so key. They're like, that's your favorite thing to say. Number eight, excuse me, you are complaining a lot. Complaining is something we will all do throughout our lives. Procrastination is something we will all do throughout our lives. It's a fact. Some people are much better at not procrastinating. I would say I'm, I would, I'm, I've trained myself to not be good at procrastinating, to get better at not procrastinating because procrastination comes from, I don't want to do this right now. I don't want to feel uncomfortable. That's in discipline. It's obviously in there. Like right now it's 715 at night. I've had a long day and I, I, I was like, I'll just do this video tomorrow. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to jump on here, do this video. I told Rob I was going to do it. It will be good for me. These are the, when people ask me, how do I change my low frustration tolerance? Right here, right here and right now. Showing up and doing this when I don't want to do it. That is how I make the change. That is the most important thing. So you're not trying hard enough and you're complaining a lot because complaining has a zero ROI, long-term chronic complaining. Um, in that regard. The ninth thing I want to talk about is your lifestyle factors are shit. The major one is work. You're not going to work. You're leaving work early. You're going in late chronically and all the other compulsions and avoidance behaviors that happen on the job site in your business career, whatever it is. Your nutrition is garbage. You're not eating at all or you're binging, usually black and white. You're either not exercising or you're exercising for three hours a day. I've been both sides of that coin. You are excessively using uh, unhealthy behaviors such as drugs and alcohol. Again, I'm just using that as a context. We're not talking about alcoholism or, or drug addiction. I'm just saying what I see. You're overly using social media. Again, it's about the balance. You don't have to delete it. Um, video games, gone for now. doesn't mean gone forever. All your lifestyle factors are perpetuating instant gratification because that's what we're sold. And it's very easy to remain in that. Again, social media is not inherently bad. Video games aren't inherently bad. So, uh, you know, uh, I mean, smoking a joint here and there isn't inherently bad. I mean, I live in Colorado. Marijuana is legal. Um, having cocktails here and there isn't inherently bad. Again, we're not talking about addiction and alcoholism. The balance is key, but usually people overuse that, which is totally understandable. And that's why they revert to those behaviors. And the 10th thing I want to talk about is you're not open-minded. Now, I'm going to talk about this one a little bit more. I am currently reading The Communist Manifesto. Rob and I were laughing about this today. I was sitting in pictures. I watch documentaries on socialism, communism. I watch documentaries on things I don't agree with politically, religiously, and everything. The reason why I do that is because I made it a goal of mine to open my mind in ways that I didn't think was possible because I was very black and white. Now, what a lot of people do in life is they like to avoid discomfort. So they go, oh, I'm a free-flowing spirit. Nothing bothers me. That is complete disillusionment. That is, you're lying to yourself. And I don't mean lying in an OCD sense. I mean, you're avoiding the realities of life. Albert Ellis, in my opinion, said it best. Optimal, you know, overall happiness and contentment comes from a mixture of optimism, skepticism, and realism. Optimism, looking for the benefits and the positives of life, because positivity is key, not being too negative. Also being skeptic, not believing everything you he hear, doing your research, looking at things anecdotally, and then realism, looking at the way life is. People will die. We have no idea if there's a God. Um, uh, life isn't fair. There's no deserving this. These are things we cannot say with absolute certainty. Um, if someone is saying there's absolute, cer absolute certainty, it isn't a rational belief because it cannot be proved with science. And there's no answer to those things. And that's what drives people to these extreme OCD cycles because they want certainty on those things. So these are all things that, that are keeping you stuck. If you want to learn more about these, we have a great webinar coming up. I believe it's December 6th called uh, How to Navigate OCD Recovery and Anxiety Provoking World. I'm going to talk about all this stuff. But I want to end the video going back to point one. This is so important. The present moment cannot be forced. I, this is the thing I see talked about incorrectly the most. You get it. Look, you right now watching my video, you understand this. If you have OCD, you know you can't force the present moment. You've been trying. You're doing mindfulness classes all the time. Mindfulness meditation is inherently bad. I, I don't practice meditation or mindfulness in, in a direct way. When I'm hiking, I'm meditating. I'm meditating when I'm hiking. When I'm deep in a book, I'm meditating. It's not the, the typical way. 
that people imagine. There's different forms of meditative states and I'm very present in those moments. When I'm hiking a 14er and I'm in pain and my legs are aching and I'm dehydrated, I'm present in that moment. I feel I observe everything, but I'm not sitting down and actually meditating. It's just not as simple as people make it out to be. Um, and again, I'm always open for discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in our coaching and webinar services, please email info at OCD Recovery. We get back to you in a timely manner, uh, info at OCDRecovery.com. And thank you so much. And as always, have a great day or night.